to the first ever Hatters Chatters podcast with me, Alex, ATC on Twitter, Kieran, Kieran, Prestige something on Twitter. Prestige, yeah, hello. Hi. Ben McCoy, Ben McCoy on Twitter. Happy on McCoy there. Stephen, with a PH, made sure, made sure he emphasised that. Um, Mad as a Hatter on Twitter. And yeah, this is the, the uh, Hatters Chatters podcast where we'll be uh, following Stockport County throughout the course of the uh, 2021 season. And then hopefully beyond. Hopefully beyond. Hopefully. We'll, uh, we'll probably get into changing of guests of, of people on this um, throughout the course of the season. But uh, yeah, let's go for it. Um, have we started the season, boys? Kieran, how do you think we've started the season? Uh, I would say fairly well. Like, we've had a few games where we've not played great. But then, like, yeah. cause, I mean, you look at Weymouth, we were woeful. But then Chesterfield, yeah. we absolutely battered them. Yeah. We went to Rochdale today, who are two leagues above us, and we beat them. And, yeah, we rode our looks like Ben was ridiculously good in there. But we still go to a League One club, realistically match them. And then, you know, I, I think we've had a good start, but we will also get better when the team's fully fit and we've all gelled. And then, yeah, we question, can get better. Yeah, cool. um, question for everyone. Um, Torquay. Do, do we think they could run away with it because they beat us? Um, we would, I think we're, we are favourites, aren't we? Um, do, do, are there, could they be runaway title winners? Because well, they, they look unstoppable. I think only Solly Hull have, have beaten this season, if I'm right. And, and they lost to Maidenhead. Um, so, yeah. Do, anyone, think they, anyone think they can go and win it? Or do you think we'll catch up? Or anyone will catch up? I personally don't think that well, Because obviously, 46 games quite have a big run. And obviously they did well, but I wouldn't say they deserve to beat us. And then obviously, but then again, you look at last Saturday, went to Art of the Pool and stuffed and fired. Yeah. So yeah, that's no easy job. Showing positive signs. So hopefully, I think we might have been the people to get them kick started. So yeah, that's not that's not a great thing to to have. Steve, Stephen, any comments? Uh, they they've been playing very well. I think I think we're unlucky. Not to not to get anything from that game. It was a bit of a free goal, wasn't it? Yeah, um, mm. you know. But they are playing well at the moment, Torquay. I don't think. Again, I, I agree with Ben. There's a lot of games to be played, and you know, teams forms they dip, they go up. Some teams can maintain it, but I don't. I don't think they're maintained. It will be. They'll definitely be up there, uh, along with I think Torquay will still be there where thereabouts not as well but I think someone will end up knocking them off they'll let a form all teams go through it so um be amazing if they <laughs> if they do do it and go on beating all season but highly unlikely in this league for me the most unpredictable league in this country isn't it really probably I'd, I'd probably agree with that I mean no one saw Barrow winning it and I think they were they were in the bottom four after 10 games last season I think oh Barrow. they were they were both at the start of the season weren't they we've beaten, we've beaten. They didn't look bad when they played us, but we 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 dealt with them, didn't we? Uh, I thought when they played us, they were they were okay, but they weren't. They didn't look like winning a title, and then they go ahead and win it. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, but just a question on Torquay: Who's a better manager, Jim Gannon or Gary Johnson? Do you even need to ask? Yeah, what a silly question. <laughs> Gary Johnson, sorry, no, 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 no. If I was to play devil's advocate, Gary Johnson has managed in the Championship and internationally. He managed Latvia. Jim hasn't done that. But Jim's got all the clubs. Jim could manage Latvia yeah. quite a too. Pretty sure he has one of them UEFA licenses with barely any manager else, so... Oh, oh I, don't, I don't know. But I, don't, I don't know how the UEFA licence works, but... Um, Gary Johnson is a good manager, but I don't think he's better. Yeah. Okay, I'll agree with that. Um, how do we think we've done it? What, what do we make of the FA Cup so far this season? Because obviously we're recording this after we've beaten Rochdale earlier today. Um, and we were technically knocked out um, last last Saturday. Was it last Saturday? No, Saturday before, wasn't it? We were, we were knocked out. All right, we were knocked out. And then, um, what do you know? We, 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 we went, we were, we're back in it. Yeah, um, yeah. we've just lost Stephen as well. Just gone. Has Stephen left? Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Oh, well. He'll oh, well. be, be back. Probably yeah. just the Virgin Media Wi-Fi. Thought it became free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, now, how do, uh, what do we make of the FA Cup? How far do you reckon we can go? Oh, it depends it... if we get in the next round, doesn't it, really? Yeah. I think in terms of if we get a 
lower league opposition, say we've got like a Canvey Island or a Marine. I don't want to obviously jinx it, but it should be an easy passage through. But then again, I think it'll be because realistically we're not going to win it. But I'd like to try and get like another League One opposition to see where we are and see what it seems good for the confidence. So. The fair comment. I'd, I'd like to get yeah. someone around our level in the next round, just because I feel like even get someone lots below us, if we beat them, it's like oh, it's pointless, and it's their potential banana slips really. Like if we if we get someone like Dagenham, it's like we'd be favourites, but if we lose, it's like in the same league as if we lost to someone like Canby Island then it'd be like yeah, yeah. That. yeah. And he, and he beat them hopefully yeah. get someone really think, really yeah. nice in the third round go on Stephen I think do you know what I think we'll um, I think we'll be you know it'd be a good test for us to get anybody because again it all comes down to magic of the cup doesn't it you know mm. all these little the, the, the lower league teams that come in and they always cause upsets so any team for me is a banana skin, but um, you know, more than Tiptree, Hayes and Yedding, all the other teams that are, you know, in it still. But um I think we could give anyone a good go. With the way we're playing at the moment, you know, the FA Cup is a special cup, isn't it? And um to get through to round three, unbelievable. You know, to land potentially a Premier League team and we haven't played a Premier League team for a long, long time. So um so yeah, let's hopefully see what we get on Monday. I, I agree. I personally, I don't want us. I don't want us playing a League One or League Two team. I just want, I just want someone who, who we'd be clear favourites for. Someone like Canvey Island, someone like Marine. Um, they are potentially banana slips, but I'd happily, I'd gamble on that really, because um, I think we've got the ability to beat them, um, the pair of them, without any sort of slip. So yeah, and then Premier League or Championship side. Wouldn't mind City away, although I would mind having to miss that game because of COVID. Um, yeah, I was going to say we don't want the big yeah. one. Yeah. We'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait. We'll wait until next year for um, to get like one of the big six away. Or something. I, I mean, just saying, if we were to go into League Two, then would we come in at the same or a later stage? Yeah, we in no, we come in. We come in at this round. We'd have come in yeah. at this. Round. So, two. so yeah, we'd have more of a likelihood of playing them. Um, Point of so I'll, 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 I'll take it either way I don't mind it. Um, I'd love to get in the third round though I think, I think everyone yeah. would yeah. Uh, I'd like to get in the third round but I'd be gutted if you got someone like City or United either at home or away yeah. and we'd go because of Covid yeah well Rollish Day away would have been a class away day maybe 2-3 two, oh, two, thousand county fans in, in the Rochdale end I'd have quite liked that I'd have quite that especially a good day well, if we all went there wouldn't it absolute yeah. cracking day Everyone would have been there at like 8.59 a.m. <laughs> on the beer at the pub. <laughs> 59 a.m.? What are you starting late? <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, imagine, uh, all I would say is I think a lot of people, I think there could have been pitch invasion potential had um, had we been there for Rooney's goal um, because the guy shot from inside his own half and, and scored. Um oh, that's not easy to do. Mm, it's it's no. pretty good. Personally, I'd take uh, I'd take John over Wayne right now. Um, I mean, oh, Wayne's, Wayne's not doing very well, is he, Sam? Uh, we don't need to speak about Derby. They're irrelevant to this podcast. Yes, they are. <laughs> um, how do we think we'll finish? <laughs> how do we think um, the league will end up this season? What would you, your top seven be and your bottom four be? Ooh, that's yeah. tough. You yeah. Well, bottom... Do we really need to worry about bottom four? Because there's only three going down, aren't Sorry, bottom three. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Now. Yeah, uh, three, isn't there? I could see Dover going down, on honestly. I'd have, I can see Dover, Barnet, and one of and one of Altrincham or Kings Lynn going. Yeah, I think, think Altrincham will, will work out. Like, they look not in a great position, but they've also got games in hand, haven't they? Not at least they did last their chance. So. Yeah. As well, I would have said Weymouth. Before not Saturday, yeah, so before we yeah. were cruising, and then yeah. all of a sudden they were a completely different side of the second half. So they keep that going. There'll be a few good things on the way. Hopefully, I, I think they were, they were lucky to catch on a bad day on last Saturday, but it was also Weymouth. Weymouth will be fine this year. Yeah, I think, um, it'll be fine. Ulti and Dover, uh, I think they'll they're in serious trouble. Uh, I don't think they've strengthened enough. Dover have got their own. They've had their issues, didn't they, in the summer? Um, oh, Dover. I think 
Yeah, yeah, they did have their issues. I think all team might just slip inside, but that last relegation place, I actually can't say for certain who it would be, who I think it would be, because you know, in this league everything changes. But I don't think Kings Lynn will go down. I don't think Weymouth are fourteenth, I believe, at the moment. Yeah, uh, you know, they uh, just checked it now. They're fifteenth at the minute. Fifteenth. So that, I don't think. That and I don't the think Redwich might be going down. They, they're oh, fifteenth no. right now. I don't think they're going to. I think they've got far too much quality to go down. I think they're Calum, yeah, they're bad, bad Calum, bad. Calum, he ain't going down. I think uh, Barnet have survived as much as I don't want them to because they're Barnet, you know. They'll probably just blame they everything on the pitch again. Yeah. League and League Two, so I think they'll be all right. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'd say top seven for me, I'd say, obviously, talking the way they started, probably yeah. it was. Wheelstone, I definitely don't think will stay there. I'd say your classic would be like your Solihull Moors, Notts County, Park the Ball. And then maybe say even if Bournemouth would have not started the best, I'd probably say that they'd be up there as well. I think Bournemouth would get in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think well, so. Bournemouth would have got two games in hand over all in the game hand over most of them. Sutton are, um, are a bit of a wild card. Well, they've yeah. they, they yeah, they four, they lost are. one so far. So Sutton I'll, might even be up there. I'll be honest, um, I'm, very, well, I'm very suspicious of Notts County because they have lost to Maidenhead and... Someone else this season. They lost the on the opening day, didn't they? That's, yeah, that was it. They lost Maiden and Dover. 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 Um, Another so, team you've got to be weary of that just tends to creep up out of nowhere, and that's Bromley. Yeah. That's a good shout. Yeah, I forgot all about it. Because they've got a good manager. They've got a good manager. I can't remember his name, but you've got a manager. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll uh, creep up quietly as well, I think. What do we think about Chesterfield? Do you think they'll be any good or...? They've got one, one dimensional football and that, that, that is it. It's condemning. I yeah. actually I actually thought Wrexham could have creeped at this season, but the start they may have been really shaky. They have got Andy Yusuf who are who I was quite like um, precarious about. Um yeah. but I think they'll I'm, I'm not too sure on them. But I think they'll be in a similar scenario to us if if the Hollywood crew buy him. Um because they've not they've been bought by them, but Ryan Reynolds and Harley's Darby PC. Um, they were looking into them. Uh, so I, I'd like to see Wrexham back in the football league. Yeah. <laughs> they're 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 getting league more team, in they? Horace Greens, then. Um, it, yeah, it is. It is like a league team, like Wrexham in our league, Hartlepool, Notts County, and then you've got like Forest Green, you've got Fleetwood, you've got Salford. It would, n- nothing clubs, really. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned, uh, I think it was Ben mentioned Weymouth, and they had a, a Tom Whelan. Now that's a beautiful transition for me because let's move on to the very controversial John Whelan. Um, uh, do we think he'll ever make an appearance back on um, County Commentary? No. You don't. Uh, uh, no. Although, I, isn't he? Doesn't he like financially back it or something like that? Or was it part of the magic? Yeah, it's. I, I don't. I would, if he was, if he was more, the thing is, I don't think it was even so much the commentary that like you can excuse the commentary from being a bit excited. But then he was going on Twitter the next day, not the next day, yeah. Yeah, later in the same day, arguing with people like, like, John, yeah, John, you know, these these are a decent side. They've got promoted twice, um, twice in two seasons. Give him a bit of respect, and he was like, he was like, no, yeah, he, he really didn't give respect to uh, to Weymouth, did he? Uh, uh, which no. I, I think that's I think that's 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 unacceptable from our standard. I'd actually be interested in doing what um, Rochdale did today. Have have one like, Rochdale support, have one county support. I wouldn't mind having like one county support, one Notts county support. Yeah, you get it. Well, it's a, it's a you bit get of a balance for you, don't you? Yeah. That would be a good one. That'd be quite. Yeah. That'd be a balance. I, I wouldn't mind that. But um, yeah, I don't think um, do you, think think. As a commentator's job should be to commentate what's going on on the pitch, not to um, not 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 to sort of give his opinion on Boris, um, which <laughs> and lemonade. Oh, we can't forget, we can't forget lemonade. I don't really know how you put that into commentary. Four formation. Dear, dear, dear. Like, then after the seventieth minute. Two four four. Like, mm. Yeah, that's. I'm not too sure two <laughs> four four exists. Eh, that's you, what you could would, do it. But you have two centre backs and. Mm, not too sure. It's very much how football started with the two three five in like the eighteen late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen yeah. yeah, not a modern it's a bit old school. I think he's a couple of years off if he wants to bring the back back of two. Or, um, 
Anyhow, let's move on to our let's move on to our own team. Um, we've got a lot of new signings this summer due to a bit of Mark start investment. Um, how do we think they've done? How do we think Mark Kitchen's done? Because personally, I think Mark Kitchen, he he, I give him a nine out of ten. I think you can see his importance in this team. Um, in the cup game against Chesterfield, where we missed him, um, we had nothing down that left hand side. So I reckon I think he's a big big player. Uh, thoughts, anyone? I, I think, think he's a good player. Yeah. Sign of the season. I'll just say in terms of the way, obviously Gannon has utilised the whole thing of the attacking wing backs this year, and he fits that perfectly. Yeah. Thought it was all right when we played him back in um, January against well, Hot, well, when he was playing for Hartlepool. And obviously, he's been at League One standard. He was he played when when the Rochdale didn't he? Yeah, yeah fake up. So obviously, he's got that higher experience. So. He's definitely one for the future, and especially as well as we put him on that contract. So, yeah. I think he's um, he's a very he's a very direct player as well. I think he's always wanting to get forward, and he and always wanting to contribute, get involved. And one thing I have seen about him as well, even when he's been up top and uh, the opposing team are on uh, on the counter, say he'll always get back. You know, so his work rate is good. Um, I think, and you know, I think he's. He fits the team well. Like he gels in very, very well with the lads, and yeah. you know, you can tell there's a there's a, a like you know a, a great element about him about you know um, how he wants to just keep improving. Um, I think he's a great signing for us personally. I think he he fits the bill perfectly. Yeah, I agree with that. I'd give my what, what would you rate him out of ten so far? Uh, uh, I think probably. Yeah, I'd give him eight as well. I don't eight, give yeah. anyone a ten, but I think yeah, you've got to give him miles though. When 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 we signed Mal, I I looked at him and I was like, eh, he looks like he looks like a good signing, but you know. I thought I thought um, James Jennings would be our first choice left back, honestly. And yeah, then so. but Kitchen at the moment, I don't think you could drop him for anyone. He's in yeah. that position or left wing back, whatever formation we play in. That's his position now to lose. I mean, another person for the left side will be Jordan Williams. I mean, he obviously made his debut today. We haven't seen um, anything of him uh, due to injury. Um, do you reckon he could come good? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think we, we saw him for maybe a couple of minutes in a pre-season friendly. He might have been against Salford or, or, or even Rochdale. He looked he look, he look like he got the pace about him. And 16 goals for a relegated file side, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, and for a left winger, that's that not similar statistics to Danny Lloyd at us. Yeah, uh, he scored yeah. against us last year, didn't he, in the home fixture? And he did a bit of a nuisance. He was a bit of a nuisance on that. I thought personally, because I remember just like speaking to my dad, and I was like, "Blumenek, the, they've obviously got some serious players, and he was yeah a bit of havoc." So no, I'm absolutely delighted with him now. Yeah. So he'll easily come good once he once he gets fit. He looks yeah. like we we can see what he's done at this level from just last season. Yeah. He, yeah. he will come good. Like, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's like even when he come on for what was it 10, 15 minutes he had today at least. Yeah, um, like you can tell, he's got pace about him. He does yeah. have pace, so fully I, fit with more with more starts as he gathers match fitness. I think he'll come good for us. Him, him in kitchen on the same wing that is going to be dangerous. Right? Yeah, it's good. good yeah, match that. that's a very lethal left wing. Our lead. That's a very lethal left wing. Uh, on the right wing, Macaulay Southern Hales. I've been a bit curious with him because he's only made seventy minutes of an appearance. Three um, MSA. Yeah, we've made. He we started <laughs> one game and came out. Halifax. Halifax. He started Halifax, I believe. Yeah. And he, he, he got, I mean, to be fair, super sort of Tom came got out. A bit, a bit of pace about him. I thought he did all yeah. right. He was playing against Geisel in pre season, but yeah, obviously, yeah. I think he's having a bit of problems in terms of getting with fitness and stuff like that. But I'm sure, yeah. kind of, like with Jordan Williams, he's not been rushing anyone into the yeah, squad. He doesn't like a rush, does he? So no, he, doesn't. Uh, he looks like a good player, but he, he does need to get up to match fitness. I mean, he was another one from Hartlepool, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he was on yeah. five games. Only five games, five games for him. But, well, then he would obviously come from Cleveland. Yeah. So. yeah, I think it says something about him when he only played five games and their fans weren't happy that he joined us. Um, oh, they, they were heartbreaking, weren't they? Yeah, they weren't happy then. So, so well, they weren't, weirdly, they, I, I seem to recall they weren't too bothered about Kitchen going. Because of his defensive abilities, which which wonders me to think that's why Jim played him on the left wing today and in yeah. on, on on the left of the the, the 
three five. I, I think that's right. excuses. <laughs> I, I think they were absolutely raging that he left. Yeah. Um, I just think it's excuses because you know when you, you know when you do oh we didn't want him anyway. You yeah, uh, I just uh, think that's a typical yeah, excuse. I get what you I mean. Can, yeah, great it's, player. It's, you it's know, like when, Sam so of one, obviously we want to keep him, but to see him going, obviously he was our main, he was our top goal scorer last year. You're thinking bit of a kick in yeah. the neck. But Although yeah. I'd argue um, Osborne doesn't get into this team. I don't think he's getting into this team. No, no, definitely not. I, I think he's a very good player. I'm a big Osborne fan, but it's I don't think he. It's not necessarily he won't be good enough. I don't see where he'd fit in in terms of the tactics. Yeah. So I think yeah. John Rooney's a more attacking central midfielder and Maynard's a more defensive one. And that's how like I think Jim wants to play it really. You'd either you'd either have him in where John Rooney plays or where Connor Jennings plays and you wouldn't start him ahead of either of those two. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. you'd be a bench player or an impact player, so that's not what he wants to be. And that's understandable. Who who does want to be one of them? It does show how good our team, even that season, was because Osborne's gone up to League Two this season and is regularly playing in the league above us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for Matty Warburton as well for Northampton yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah that's interesting because they've loaned him back to they've loaned him to Yeovil, and it, oh, yeah, they have. Although yeah. he he started, I think all three of the he was involved in all of the goals in their opening three games and scored on the opening day. So that, that was a quite strange move in my opinion. I'm sure I saw a couple of their fans saying they had a lot of people injured, so it was one of those when everyone's back fit, which I assume they are now, there just wasn't really space for him in the squad. Which is, Maybe, yeah, uh, that's a good point, as um, he was just there for injury's sake. Um, yeah. Yeah, tough one. Uh, moving on, what do we think of Alex Reed and Connor Jennings so far? I think he's about Ooh. quite a good poacher. Jennings has had a really slow start, but we're the last two, three games, we've, well, last two games, we've started to see a bit more of that league, of, of the football league, Jennings. Um, I think it's just as soon as he just gets a couple of goals under his belt is when he can start rolling. That's so obviously, you look at his record at Tramir, yeah. and he's scoring one every three, so obviously he's scored some possible some vital goals, so yeah. I do think he will come good. Again, it's just, he's been desperately unlucky a couple of times this year, obviously, offside goals, but... I can definitely see him becoming a vital part, like come back the back end of January and going through for the rest of the season. Yeah, Jen- yeah. Jennings is yeah, next. I, I I mean, we've seen him. We've seen we've seen Jennings even when he was here on loan. We've seen him when he was on loan. Um, I think it was Macclesfield in this league. And the thing is as well, Ben was saying about his record at Tranmere. Bear in mind that was at league level. Yeah, it shows how good he actually is. He just yeah. all he needs is a, a goal, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Today you could see on um, on Wednesday, he was he was excellent. He just needs a goal, and then you can he can definitely kick on. Yeah, I, agree. I, I agree. I think that one goal will just spark him. I think like get, ignite him into into getting more. And with Alex as well, I think you know he's he's gone from Stevenage. He's he's dropped into this division, but I think he's slotted in quite perfectly. You know, he is a bit of a poacher, but one thing I find with him is. He finds the channels to run in, like he does very well to, to, to latch onto the ball. And, you know, he's a tall lad, but he is quite strong um, mm. at the same time. And I think he's had a great start so far. Um, yeah. A really, really good start. But CJ, I think we're yet to see the best of him. Yeah. You know, he's, you can see he's trying his hardest. He's putting in a lot of effort. It's not as if he's being lazy or he's had a, you know, a rubbish start. He's, he's really trying. He's still getting involved. You know, he's still contributing. But yeah, like everyone else has said. Once that one goal goes in, I think that that'll set him up. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. I think um, the second goal against Chesterfield midweek, I think we can start to see more of a Bennett and Reed combo because he started the opening day. Um, yeah. Clearly, they must have had some form of um, connection together to, to have got that move off the uh, the Bennett flick um, to to Reed. I think. But, and do you reckon we'll start to see more of that combo, or, or will James seat back into? Um, playing alongside Bennett, I I think he could possibly play all three of them. I wouldn't mind seeing all three of them playing. What in the four four two? Or the four four? It depends. Well, it depends what formation we play, doesn't it? I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind us playing. If we're playing two up top, playing maybe a midfield diamond. I think we've got the, especially with um with Williams coming back for the left wing now. I think we've got the players for it. Jim Jim's used a diamond before when he when he came back to us actually. Yeah. 
um, in 2015. Yeah. Um, when Trove was sort of shielded, shielded uh, the back four, but um, could Maynard do that? Possibly. I think, I think he could. It shows. We've got a lot of options. Like obviously, we've seen him do four two three one this year, four four two, play five at the back. I think I think he's got so many of- options in that squad. 100%. I agree with Kieran there. It's obviously, it just shows you the amount of, again, the amount of like, formations we've already used. Like, literally last year, you knew exactly, going up in the pub at 2 o'clock, you knew exactly we were playing 4 2 3 1 every single week. Mm-hmm. Whereas we've been able to switch it up, and I think, obviously, it's worked the past couple of games. We've beat a League One opposition, and we comfortably beat Chesterfield. So I think Jim will be sticking with a 4 4 2, maybe for the foreseeable future, but who knows? If you look at the uh, the squad we've got now, though, and the different formations we've already played at, uh, in the games that we've already played, you can look at the squad. They are all versatile players. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say about 75, 80% of the players we've got are all versatile. They can play in numerous positions. So it gives us that advantage to 100%. switch up. So if we're missing one player, that person, look at Hogan. Hogan, correct me if I'm wrong, played right back the other night. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. right back. And yeah. He absolutely, he had a solid game at right back. I thought, absolutely, yeah. he was solid. And you know, again, it's um, Minihan. Minihan's played centre back. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> um, did. You know, so it, it just proves that we've got that versatility about us. So I reckon this season you'll see a lot of players swapping positions, playing out of position to their favoured position, but still doing a job and still doing well. Sure. So. Um, you know, that's a good thing to have as a team, I think. And, you know, I think we'll do well um, going forward if anything was to happen. Um, like the other day, we had a few players out, didn't we? We had yeah. five five players yeah, out. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know this? And yeah. we still, still managed to get the job done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100% agree. I think about it. The only people I can think of who couldn't play another position are probably Ash Palmer and Bennett. Like, because even, even like up front, Reed would yeah. play outside. You know, Jennings can obviously play anywhere across the front line. Yeah. You know, we've seen Thomas play over that full back. We've yeah. seen in pre season, Jordan Williams played at wing back. Yeah. I know. think Maynard is the yeah. another one that can probably Maynard, just play yeah, centre mid, like a, a deep centre mid, like a defensive yeah. midfielder. He just tidies up, doesn't he? He's just so comfortable yeah. on the ball. What do we make so, of Maynard? Do we, what was quality, quality, side. Quality. Yeah. I, mean, I know, I know we were last season, but he's been, yeah, it's super good. For those that weren't at the Dagenham game, he, he does look something. He, does yeah. look something. He's, he is a bag of all sorts, him, isn't he? Yeah. Actually. I mean, um, if you if you recall the fourth goal on Wednesday night, um, it was Will Evans who played it out from the back for Chesterfield, and, and Maynard nipped him and sort of he, like, he won, won the ball back, and we went and got a fourth goal through three from the spot, and, and, and Rooney took it and scored. But um, but yeah, no, um, mate, yeah, I'm liking the look of Maynard. I think mm-hmm. yeah, he's got promoted with. Tranmere and Salford at this level. Tranmere, I did not. Know yeah, that. so he was in that. He was in that Tranmere side as well. So obviously he's got mm-hmm. so much experience. So I think that's what I've been seeing in terms of when starts come in with the investment. We've not chanced it with people obviously high up in the leagues who might turn good. We've gone for that instant. Yeah, maybe like we know exactly what we've bought basically. Yeah. Um, what do we make of the? Um, we're missing two. One, one, one major player I'd say so far this season, John Rooney. Um, I think that's seven goals or six goals. I count maybe eight. I think maybe eight. We're, we're eight. losing count. We're losing count already. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good sign. Everything considering he's not even a striker. Don't yeah, well, he got um, fifteen goals for Barrow last season. I want to say from from, from centre mid, which is I that's think he'll, I think he'll beat that. I think he'll beat that easily. This yeah, year. could do. Could do. I think so as well. Do you know what? Every time I see Rooney play, right, and them teeth, this is what I've got to do because they're so bright. <laughs> Literally, just put them on because they're blind in that. <laughs> no, honestly, I think um, I think he's super. We need to we need to ask him where he got them. So where he got those yeah. teeth done? I, th- I, I think got Bobby Firmino I style. Got them, uh, <laughs> he got them done at the same place as that lady that uh, the girl that plays for Stockport uh, County Ladies, Livy Wilder. Her name is. She's got the same like literally <laughs> right teeth, isn't she? But anyway, I think he's been superb again. He, you could just tell he's just a class above Disney life. Oh. He's Passing ability is just great. Vision is great. The, and he's the got raking diagonal balls or something else. Mm. 
A question out, guys. Do we prefer Rooney like today when he was in the deep lighting, or would we rather have him as a 10? Deep. deep. I think I'd deep as well. Deep. Yeah. I mean, it's clean. just a lot more of the ball as well. Yeah. Yep. The way he played today, obviously, Maynard can sit deeper and then you can have Rooney coming from deep. Because Rooney, Rooney is so good, he can ping them balls out to the wingers, but he's also got the energy and the shooting ability, passing ability, to get yeah. forward, get on the end of the crosses and score goals. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you can tell he's got a, like a brain in terms of the way Dusty can try and like sit in between like the, yeah, like the centre backs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gets the yeah. ball off. You can I mean, tell what happens with like better quality footballers in terms of not looking always to just ping it over the top. Just yeah, just just thinking about it now. He has won the ball back um, when when camped on our sort of area. Um, I know we weren't camped on our area today, but if you recall the um, the goal that Rooney scored, he won the ball back. There's no assist. He he almost he won the yeah. ball back yeah. and then created something with it, which was the goal. I think that, that might maybe sort of defensive side of them. Um, I don't know if Jim's installed that or not. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure Ian ever did. Um, but I, I know nothing about Ian Everett's tactical approach. So yeah, um, I think would you give Rooney an eight? Would you give Rooney an eight? Out of I think I'd give him a nine. I yeah, think I'd give, I think I'd yeah. give him a nine. Me. Yeah. Nine. The thing is, even having the ability to see the goal he scored today is quite special. But to be able yeah. to pull that off is it, you yeah. can't, that's nothing you can teach. That's just yeah. nothing. That's a, that's you watch it, it looks it's just to even think it, about it. shooting from there was just a ridiculous, it's ridiculous insane. idea. It's better mess. Well, it's, it right. it's, yeah. it's the same as that Millwall goal, um, Wimbledon goal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah Beckham, 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 yeah, Beckham, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. The same as it, but yeah, and great, he great. He's done it. Ability. He's done it for other clubs as well. Like we're not the first club John Rooney's done it for, so it, it's it's not just a fluke. He can do that. Hopefully, he does it again because it, it was amazing. Yeah. But, um, Ryan Crowsdale, he came quite late in pre-season. Um, man of the match worthy performance against um, Solid or Moors. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a drop off against Weymouth, but um, I think he's been pretty solid since he's come back into the, into the side. And I think we can see why Jim signed him. Um, Jim's liked him since Kidderminster. How, how, do, we, how do we think he's fared? Um, I think he's been pretty solid. Uh, yeah, I think he's been pretty solid. He's, he can get better, though. I feel like, so far, he's been very much tidy without being spectacular. But then, obviously, he's only just come yeah. into the team a few weeks, like, a couple of weeks ago, hasn't he? He came very late, obviously, in pre-season. Didn't have um, any pre-season with um, his former club, because we all know, absolutely, <laughs> don't know what because they deleted the tweet. So, yeah, and there, uh, it's a secret. I, I don't so. think he enjoyed his spell at his former club towards the end, maybe. Um, we won't name for legal reasons. Yeah, we'll probably. probably try sewers or something. I don't know. Hey, Thorn, what make up? I was just going to say, I, I, I've obviously looking at our squad and obviously where he could fit in. I think in terms of with Maynard and Rooney, kind of deep playing would help him to maybe like push into the like centre mid, like maybe in that waiting role, just give him a free role. Because obviously yeah. with the midfield being as solid as it is. We can always give him the area to spread out to flanks, and obviously you got Kitchen and uh, Thomas bombing down. So, yeah, I, I think for me, I think he's done a job so far. We know we know he's got a lot of quality about him. I think he'll he'll definitely come better. Um, one thing I found about him as well, he's he's very quick to win the ball back. You know, he's 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 on it straight away. Um, I think he'll settle in a bit more. Again, he come in quite late, didn't he? So um, um, it's hard to tell because he's, you know, he's played a handful of games. You know, he, he got man of the match uh, for Soil, and I thought he had a great game there. Um, but if we're talking out of ten, I reckon so far from what I've seen, I'd give him a seven. Yeah, I'd give him a seven. Seven area. I feel like he can get a lot better, but he's, he's yeah. not not started badly at all. It's just yeah. Yeah, he's Good getting people, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, James, well, the last, I'll say Jamie Stop first because, strictly speaking, he is a new addition to the squad. And I think at the beginning of the season, we would have highlighted him as probably our weakest area, but I don't actually think that's been the case. Um, yeah, I think he's put in um, solid shifts in the last two games as left back. 
Um, and I think we played left back for us maybe once um, when we were in the National North. And I don't think it was as solid as uh, the Duxbury performance, which we were sort of used to seeing. But um, yeah, how do we think Jamie Stott's fared? Because I think out of, out of all our defence, you wouldn't pick him as a weak link and you wouldn't pick anyone else as a weak link. It's just mm -hmm. the manner in which we've conceded goals has been the weak link, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, how, how do we think Jamie Stott started? I, I think <laughs> solid. You said solid. Yeah, pretty much sums him up, really. He's not he's not a spectacular player, but he's, he's also a centre-back. You don't you don't need a spectacular player to play centre-back. We need somebody who's going to tackle, who's going to head the ball, going to make clearances, and he does all that, you know. It's all you can really want from a centre-back. Yeah. As long as they're not like obviously you're not getting nervy every time he gets the ball, which he which he hasn't been because obviously when we were in the north you had Palmer and him every week, and you you never went into the game thinking all oh, right they're gonna they're gonna drop a mistake or something like that. Yeah. So I think in terms of he's reliable player, I'm not sure. In terms of, obviously I don't think he's obviously better than Palmer or Hogan, but he's definitely a very good back back up. Yeah. No. Yeah. I yeah. agree. I think. He does a job, um, you know. So I think the reason why he settled in again so quickly is because obviously he was on loan with us. He played with Palmer. He has an understanding with Palmer. Uh, and he seems to link up well uh, with Hogan as well, I believe. And I, I think he's a solid choice, to be fair. And when he was announced, I was happy to see him back because he knows the club. He's got a relationship with the fans. He knows how much he's liked here. And he knows the majority of the lads. Jim likes him. Um you know, so um, so yeah, I think so far so good from uh, from Mr. Stott. Yeah, I'd agree. I think if there's one concern that I've got about him is that when we come up a team that has got a sort of Tom Denton player, they'll be the he'll, they'll target him. They yeah. will target him. Yeah, he's, he's, we saw Chesterfield do that, and I, I'd worry that the ball and Wood would do that as well with Kevin Mutish Manga, who's arguably a, a far more dangerous player than, uh, than mm. Tom Denton. Yeah. I think it's it's good because he was such a good signing for us because he's one of them. Was it was he like a spectacular? Oh, we're going to win the league instantly signing? No, but he loves the club because I mean we saw that when we won the title. He he wasn't even with the club anymore. He came as a fan. He loves the club. Everyone around the club loves him. He's got a relationship with um, Ash Palm, obviously I already mentioned. He's got a relationship with Ben because obviously they played together so much. So it was a no brain signing, and I don't think anyone's absolutely could complain that we did sign him. Yeah, I uh, fully agree. Uh, yeah, I think so as well. And it's it's good, you know, um, that he's back. You know, just going back to the Champions Parade um, with him and Dan Cowan and the Dark Fruits. <laughs> <laughs> Got it right there. <laughs> there we go. He's a the character last, and it's yeah. good. Do you like yeah. it? The last four, I've got four more names here. We've not really seen much of, of any of them, really. We've we've got James Jennings, Josh Barnes, Harvey Gilmore and Louis Britton, two of which haven't actually played a single minute for us and one may not actually be contracted to us. Um, so, yeah, we don't know a lot about them. Um, what, 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 I know it's difficult to ask, but what are our thoughts on them? I think Harvey Gilmore could be something based off what Tramier fans have previously said about him. Yeah, yeah they are. They, they depends quite sign. highly. Doesn't it really? Like, I think he is. I think because if you look at like his Twitter feed, he'll retweet us and like. So he seems he seems to be. If he's not still signed, he seems to want to be still. So. I'll say pre-season as well. He he played obviously. I think he played all right in pre-season. He had a couple of eye-catching balls where you think oh, he's got that that football brain that she can lock a defence. But as I said, it's. He's been injury struck, and so we'll just have to see with him. Obviously, mm. he's, we can't just throw him in the deep end. And no, yeah. he looks technically gifted. He looks like a real technical player, doesn't he? And yeah. it's a shame that injuries hit him because you know we, with everything that you know, he would have got his chance, and he hasn't had a chance. I'd like to think though, if he's on a short term deal, which I believe he is, isn't he? Until like yeah. January. I'd like yeah. to think that maybe if he does recover in time, that they'll probably just extend it until the end of the year because, of, so. you know, yeah. God forbid if, you know, we get, an, again, another numerous of injuries, you know, and, oh, look, we've just let him go. Um, I'd like to think they'll extend it until at least the end of the season just yeah. to keep him there. So it'd be interesting to see what he can give to the team once he becomes fully fit and gets over his injury. I agree. Um, Josh Barnes, just my thought on him. Pre season, I thought he looked quite shaky, but you don't... Mm. You you wouldn't lash out a load of money um, for a reserve goalkeeper. So I think he's probably the best we're going to get. 
Yeah, and I, th- I thought he was all right in pre-season, but he, yeah, he is. He's also young. Obviously, I don't think he's played much senior football. If ever anyone. Yeah, he's, no, he was on loan to Fowler's the last season. Yeah, so uh, it's, he's he's a young keeper, but he's he's a, he seems like a fairly sort of backup. Obviously, I don't want Ben to get injured, but if Ben did get injured, I wouldn't be instantly panicking. Like, I don't know yeah. if you remember Chris Adamson when we had him, and he played once in the FA Cup, and I was every single time they got the ball, I was like, this is a goal. So he was. I think I remember him. Yeah. Um, yeah, James Jennings um, made a brief appearance against Dover and Wealdstone. Um, he gave them a goal. He gave Wilson a goal in that fixture, obviously, um, in mm. incredible um, fashion, but uh, just an off day, I'd assume, for him. Uh, but he can, he's proved the quality um, um, at Dover, the third goal, the ping to, uh, to Sam Minion, who laid it off to, to Rooney. Um, do we think he'll be in the lineup shortly, or, or will Jim not um, disrupt the, the, the squad he's got, the back four he's got, or back three he's got? I don't I'll think it's 11. But I'd definitely say he's a again he's like he's like a start in terms of a solid backup can easily transition him in. And obviously you saw him pre season, he managed to get a hat trick, so he, he, he even though he's not as yeah. attack minded as Kitchen, he can still get up. Mm. He's obviously got links, he's played with so many people, he's played with the likes of uh, Alex Reed, obviously he's got his brother, so he he knows quite and he's been at this level, he's been here Macclesfield, uh, Kettering Wrexham, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we've got so many teams that, uh, well, there's so many teams at this level that he's already well, he played. So for on a one-year deal, again for Jim, I thought that was a great signing. I think I think he'll mostly when we, everyone's fit. I think he'll be a good. He's a good bench option to have because Mark Kitchen is very good going forward. He's good defensively, but I feel like. Mark Kitchen's main focus is obviously going forward, whereas James Jennings seems like a lot more solid. Yeah. Out. So he's he's probably a good option if we if we're holding on to a lead. I'd rather yeah. if we're holding on to a lead, I'd rather much rather have Jennings than, than Kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I agree with that. I think like uh, like Ben said, he had a great game against Geisley, didn't he, when he scored um, a hat trick there, and we know. Do you know what? For a 33-year-old lad, he's he's still very, very, very fit. And he's yeah. got a lot to offer. Um, and again, he's one of them, one of them fullbacks that wants to get forward, but he'll also get back. Um, you know, to get back, help the team out. Um, but you know, he's a solid, solid option. And I'd like to think that he'd get a run. Um, you know, there'd be certain teams where um, you know Jim might want to switch it up. Uh, and again, yeah. it also comes down to injury. Like some of these guys have got to take their chances. If they're not finding themselves in the team, you know, one has to say to himself, I need to up my game a bit, you know, and make yeah. myself stand out. And there's a lot of competition. Again, we go back to the comment I made earlier. There's a lot of versatile players in the squad. So, you know, <laughs> competition's probably fierce yeah. uh, for places. So I'd like to see him involved, though, because from what, yeah. from what we've seen of him so far, he still does look like a solid option for I me. Think- yeah, I think a lot of us thought that he was just here to sort of fizzle out his career, but that doesn't appear to be to appear to be the case. You know, um, he, he, he'll be competing. Um, he's already got game time this season, so I don't. I, yeah, I think he'll. I think I think he'll grow into this team, um, James Jennings, yeah. and uh, I hope we see a lot of him. I hope we see a lot uh, more of him. Um, yeah, just two more things on the agenda, uh, Stephen. I don't know if you want to go into your bedwetters comment. Um, um, as you refer to county Facebook and the message board. Um, oh, do you know what, guys? Do you know what's annoying? It's no matter. This is what I find frustrating, right? All the good, uh, everything has to change. You know, things change all the time. You know, um, when when stock come in and you know pe- rumors were flying about this, that, the other. So I remember when it was announced in January, towards the back end of January, when it, and then everyone was happy. You know, and then there's always that one person that's literally got to throw a damn towel on everything. Like, they just can't be happy. Um, you know, the badge, I get it. You know, it's... it. it we've got to move on. Times are, We've got to be a more modern club. Stott's a businessman. You know, he mm. he's a businessman. He's got a business head. Yeah, and yeah. when you have a business model and you want to put it in place, 
it, it unfortunately it is out with yeah, the old, in with the new, and it will upset people. And I understand that to an extent where you've been going to county for years and years and years, and you're used to the same thing, and then all of a sudden someone comes and flips the mattress, changes the sheets, and you've got to get on with it. But that is part and parcel of life, and even now today, oh, bedwetters are still at it. Like I just wish they'd just be happy. Like, you know, just be happy for the club to see the club doing better to get back yeah. to where the club belongs. Yeah, which yeah. Is the football league. Yeah. So, you know, I just wish everyone would get on the same boat and just, you know, ride off into the sunset. Yeah. And, you know, you know, having a beer, whatever, and being happy, but I can't see that ever happen. We have a very, very, very diverse amount of fans yeah, within I, I certainly agree with that. Uh, you know. It's like you know, the nail on the head there, really. Is that what yeah. David said as well? It's just the whole thing about the new investment, and we've actually had someone who's come in, and we've had all these rumours of people being taken <laughs> with the Vincent Company saga and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And it's just now we've actually had someone who wants to put the time and effort in. And you could every everything that he delivered on in his interview, he's he, everything that he promised he's delivered on. Yeah, and yeah. again, it's the whole thing of you can't like please everyone. So. Mm. But, He's doing a lot more great than great for the club than bad, and that's something definitely that we can talk about. Yeah. Any comments, Kieran? I I think honestly, he's done everything he's done for the club has been great, and you, you can tell like obviously yeah, you, Stephen's right, he's a businessman, but he's not completely changed everything. He's not trying to rip the like you look at like someone like Cardiff. Complete like their owner came in, um, changed yeah. their kit colours, changed everything yeah. about them. Like whole city's yeah. owners, what did you call them? Whole city tigers. Yeah. Not, not, not really changed anything drastically. He's changed the badge, yeah. He's changed how the part looks of it. But although those are minor like cosmetic differences, it's still the yeah. same club. And you yeah. see the, um, the video they put out at the start of the season where it's like there are new owners, but this is still like all new custodians, whatever it was, but this is still the fans' club. Yeah. It, it is. Like Mark yeah. obviously wants to wants to make money with us. Of course he does. But he isn't just like he isn't just using us for a quick book. I think he is there in sincerely for the long term. Yeah. And well, everything uh, he's done successfully is obviously with his businesses he you don't get that rich for not being clever with your investments. Yeah. So yeah. I'd also say as well in terms of obviously with the investment as well, like a lot of clubs are struggling now, so we've had the thing of Macclesfield. Yeah. Um, we've had Berry in the past like couple of years. I'd rather be moaning about the 1883 being twice on the badge than yeah. see moaning about our club dying. So there yeah, was, um, there was one thing I did see. Sorry, Ben. There was one person moaning about um, the service at the bar for pints. Like of all the things you moan about about yeah. service, of, you know, <laughs> I had to wait ten minutes for a yeah. pint. I'm really sorry that you had to wait ten minutes for a pint, pal. But you know. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's just another example of just certain people just moaning about the littlest things that really isn't a big deal. Yeah, you know, big big things happen like the cladding. The cladding was another one, wasn't it? Yeah. Everyone was up in arms about that, weren't they? So what? It looks absolutely fantastic. As soon it as does. that gets done, and you'll see Stockport County, welcome to Edgley Park with the badge on the top, and you walk there to go and get your ticket. You're going to look at it and think, wow. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. Hundred yeah. percent agree. Don't want more to say on that. Yeah, I'm happy still thing with the new club shop as well. Obviously, oh yeah, we look like a proper brand. There was nothing wrong with it to start off with, but the whole thing again, he's wanted to put money in, and that whole nice touch of the old thing on the railway end, like now I'm embedded at the back of the club shop. I thought when I went to go and have a look and get me kit, yeah, was yeah. a really nice touch. So. I've actually got one question that I'd just like to input and ask the rest of you, actually, thinking yeah. about things that we just chatted about. What does everyone think about the members of staff that he's let go and the members of staff that they've brought in? What, well, Vicky? Vicky Green? Well, Vicky Green. Vicky, Vicky oh, Green, Green. Um, there's <laughs> obviously director of football, you know, Alan Lord, um, yeah. scouting and... Um, you know, there's lots of people that have come in. Um, that's, that's, that's the um, the conspiracy you see some people on Twitter. That, um, obviously, he's brought Matt, um, Matt Jansen in. Or that's it. Yeah. yeah. He's brought him, uh, like, he's like chief, um, 
player relations or something. Yeah, it just back, oh, it's just it's yeah. just the management team for um, when Jim gets that like. Well, it just go, it just goes to show in terms of I keep saying this investment thing. I just but in terms of the the the, the whole mechanics of the club now, we've got a director of football. Like Manchester United are the biggest team in the world and don't even have a director of football. So it just shows you how, obviously, how he's come in and he's wanted to have everything sound. He's obviously got all this scout. So it's like, when did we ever have a scout that was going you know, like into southern areas? Yeah. Like we're looking northern now as well. So yeah. that's, that's a really positive sign as well. So. Yeah, normally we'd just be looking at anyone from Cheshire or... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it says it says everything of us getting um, Lewis Britton on loan from Bristol City. Yeah. Like, yeah. We never have found him usually, but then obviously now we've got the we've got the resources that we can not only find him, but we can obviously sign him because yeah. Bristol City look at us and think he'll do well here. So we've actually got the ability to like look after him because we've got somewhere we can um, house him again. We've got somewhere we can house him. Yeah, he's um, he's great. staying in Mark Stotts. Yeah. Yeah, we've got full time yeah. training as well, so he doesn't need to go to his um, parent club twice a week, you know. So it's it's fine. We can, we've got the resources yeah. that yeah. we can scout the entire country now. I can't Definitely. picture his name as well, but who was that guy who came from Peterborough and he was obviously looking at the players' performance. He's like a performance analyst. Oh, he is an analyst. Oh, yeah. So we've got, so we, even we've got that, and we're they're addressing all these issues that we've got. It's just in terms of the setup is now is just. Ridiculous, obviously, we've got full time training and we've got current yeah. resources now. Yeah. So, we, basically, Mark Stott's given Gannon all his the utilities yeah, yeah. to succeed. It's just obviously Gannon's got a room to go through with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty po- positive that we all think that he will. So, yeah. Yeah. He, he's obviously taken some strain off, um, off Gannon because prior Gannon was running the 18s, the under 18s, I think, or the under 21s or yeah. whatever it was. So he yeah. Negotiations and everything, yeah. Yeah, so he's taking pressure off him and he's giving it Damian Allen. Um, I think yeah. that's it. Yeah, Michael yeah. Rains is working with him as well. Yeah, Rains, the Rains as well, yeah. Michael Rains, yeah. Yeah, so I think um, for this new change, we're, we're behaving like the most professional club outside of the professional divisions um, that, you know... Probably more uh, professional than a lot of the teams in there. Yeah, right? that's what I was going to say. Um, no, um, I think we can only... As in, in terms of ushering out the old staff, I think I think the ideal scenario is to have balance. And that's difficult. That's that's difficult to match. Um, so obviously, old faces will have been thrown out of of, of county, if you like. But um, more experienced sort of people who know what they're doing and know how to manage manage us financially. I think I think they're coming in and they'll 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 take us forward, whether it be in the smallest department or the largest. I think. Change is what we've needed. We've had the same thing for maybe eight years, um, mm, yeah. which has just brought stability. But now if we want to go back up, we need to end stability and go forward, if you know yeah. what I mean, without risking going backwards. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 touch wood, um, things won't go backwards and we don't look like going backwards. So, um, so yeah, I think it's good times. Um, it's good times are coming. Um, yeah, any, uh, yeah. Um, one last thing before we end. I've just got one last thing on the agenda. Niall Bell. Ooh. Been absent. Scored mm-hmm. flukely, I have to say, a pen um, against Chesterfield. That should have been saved. Um, and Fylde openly stated um, that they were interested. And the rumour guy on Twitter did say he was going to file. So, you know, you know, something must still be up. The, the rumour guy on Twitter just says... Whatever he wants, then like, if he yeah. throws, if you if you throw fifty things at a wall, one of them will stick. Like, <laughs> is, I w- yeah, I wouldn't trust him. But yeah, is it is it that non league non league yeah. guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me me um, and out of context hatters, we do him into thinking Ian Ormson is going to Orchard, so he clearly picks off anything. Ian exactly. you know? retired. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear I did hear about the the old uh, Niall Bell situation. Obviously, that was at the time where Jordan Williams was coming. Yeah, like, just let him go, and then we bring him in. But obviously, right now, the way he is 
He's not in third choice yeah. now. I think he's not. In third terms choice. of getting back on track, it probably would have been a good move for him. Yeah. I I think I think he'll probably go out on loan. I think it's the best thing for him. I'd like to see him on loan in the national north. I think that is the ideal scenario. Whether it's at Curzon, whether it's at Fylde, whether it's at Chorley, I don't care. Just get him in the national league north and get him playing football. Because if he's rotting away as our fourth choice, or fourth choice, yeah, strike, exactly. and can't be enjoying that, and he, it's stunting his growth. So just get him out and get him playing football. I think he would do well at another national league, our division club. Really? Lower down. I, I think, think I'd be do. surprised if Altrincham went in for him. I was just about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> just about just, to say that. Well, do they? Someone play to his strengths. Because <laughs> obviously, he can hold the ball up. and yeah. he, he looks better at doing that, actually, I think. Yeah. Um. Altrincham also, I don't know if they have, but have they got a replacement for Jordan Hume who went to Fylde? Mm, uh, yeah, they I did think. sign. They did sign someone. Yeah. Uh, if not, some but try for get Nile out on loan if Jim's not going to do it. Let's get the podcast to try and and yeah. loan Nile out on Jim on stop what comes for hard. Yeah. yeah. I've get just got a quick question as well. We forgot to address the whole thing of obviously because we went through in the first round today. Who we all want in for the second round? Alex, we'll start with you. I think I think I uh, I think I, I I'd said I'd happily take Canvey Island or, or Marine just sunk because I want us in the third round. I want us in the third round. That that's all I ask. Yeah, that that's it. I'll take someone. I want honestly. I think Dagenham. I said this before. Like pretty much like Dagenham at home would be perfect because. We'd favour it, we'd be favourites, we're probably the better team. If we do lose, it's like, we've lost to a team in our division, you know, it's not a nightmare. But mm. we've also favourites to win. Whereas, the problem is, if we do get something like Candy Island, if by, not a miracle, but like, if by, unlike the chances, we do lose it, that would derail the team. It's like, it gets all the pressure on us, you know. In Weymouth, Weymouth got a bit of pressure on us, but they're in our division, they're a very good side, and they're in our division on merit. Even though I think we still probably probably should have beat them, but they're in our division on merit. Where there's someone in like eighth tier or so, it's like that's that's um, a lot of problems if we lose to someone there. Yeah. Although you'd argue that for Staines, wouldn't you? Because Staines beat us when we won at Wembley against Rochdale that that season, I believe. Yeah, that's the wrong. Good point. Yeah. They, did, they did beat us, and, and and they are the worst team in National League South history, I believe. Um, so yeah. Um, what a title that is. Yeah, that's because we had Chris <laughs> Not what you want, but... Chris Adams, way it is. We, we couldn't beat anyone. Yeah. So, we, I doubt we'd beat the dog and got... I saw Brackley through... Uh, oh, not Brackley. I don't want Brackley. I just love Leeds to go to them the way. Oh, not Brackley. They're one of them teams where, oh, yeah. you just don't know what you're going to get with them, do you? Yeah. And we've, we're fed up of Lee and Love. They oh. always had yeah. our options. Jimmy Armstrong. Brackley. You know what? I I think right. It'd be nice to get one of the teams that are lower. Um, not being disrespectful to any of them by any means, but um, I would like to see us in the third round. And you know, as Ben said, we're not going to win it. We need to be realistic. But you know, for the journey, just to get to the third round, pick out a top draw. You know, imagine City away. You know, or City at Edgeley Park or Old Trafford, whatever. But. Yes. Oh, excitement at seven o'clock on a on a Monday with a BBC draw. Oh, this is yeah, exactly. Um, but there's some other teams in there. You've got Blackpool in there. There's Wigan and Chorley are playing on Monday. You know, and there's some teams in there. If you look at it and think, oh, do you know what? That would be a tasty tie. But looking at the whole list, I think, do you know what? I think out of that list, I think we'll give anyone a good game, if I'm honest. Uh, mm. But any team that we could beat, as long as we get to that third round, yeah, uh, be happy. You know, the, the game's worth. I think the second round's worth between twenty and thirty grand, obviously. <laughs> and then the third round, it doubles. It goes to about fifty k. That's um, a bit. That's, that's quite a few bonuses for our players. That'll help towards bonuses. Means money, money. You know, it's extra money. money it's all the income. Down. You know, but it'd be interesting to see we get ball number nine. So look out for ball number nine. <laughs> There was our ball. If, if we if we do get to the or maybe it'll probably be next year now hypothetically because obviously COVID's still going to be around. Who would be your dream, my team to get into the FA Cup? Assuming we can go to games because as far as 
as much as I'd love to get like United or City this season if we get to the third round, part of me would be gutted because obviously we can't go. So if we can go to games, who would be the dream for you to get? Chelsea. Chelsea away. Is that just because you're that bit's near for you? Well, yeah, no, do you know place. what? That would be an unbelievable away day. Chelsea away would be great. Chelsea. Chelsea's ground's beautiful. Unbelievable away day that would be. Um, but if it was somewhere close to home, if fans, I'll tell you what would be the best, best away day if we could go full capacity weather. Man, it would be one of them days where, you know, neighbours down the road, we would sell out the whole way and would be noisy. We wouldn't shut up. And imagine just walking away from there with local bragging rights. Let's face it, there's a lot of City fans in Stockport in there, so there's a lot of them. So, you know, I'd definitely walk around with a big smirk on my face. So, um, yeah. you could pick any Premier League team, actually, to be fair. Any Premier League team is a dream tie for teams at our level. Mm. You know? Pretty much, yeah. So, no longer, really. Mm. I think, for me, I'd have to go for Manchester United because where I'm originally from... My local team, technically speaking, is Manchester United. Not e- even Trafford in like tier seven, tier eight when I was growing up. Even they weren't more local. So why I support Stockport, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the right call. Um, oh, because ev- everyone I went to school with they were all United fans. But they just oh, they were United fans. So many of them just. If it was the derby, they'd be like, "Oh, I love United." Derby finishes, you don't hear from them for another six months until the next derby. And it's like. But United away, it's such a huge ground, so even if we only got, what, 10% of the capacity, whatever it is, we should still pretty much have our every single fan, yeah. family, yeah. like every single committed fan we've got, really. Which, yeah. I mean, yeah. part, like, that'd be part of the worry we like City. People will probably miss out, whereas at Old Trafford, no one will miss out, hopefully. I can, yeah. I can say one thing, though, that when this all clears up, and our first home game where every fan's allowed to go. It's gonna be it's gonna be a sellout, sure. Yeah. Definitely. It's be a sellout. It's all for everyone in the National League, I think. Surely Notts County will maybe Notts County may even hit twenty K, the ground's twenty K, but surely people have been bored of no football. I'd be surprised if they got any less than fifteen K. Yeah, they'll break the record, won't they? The record's eleven, I think. Bristol Rovers have it. Mm. Um Ben, who is who's your who do you want? Um and who's your dream tie? Who would I want in the third? Oof, that's a t- I've always wanted to go to Spurs' new ground after watching the mm-hmm. Amazon documentary. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be, a, like, in terms of a new ground, that would probably be a good one to go to. But realistically, I'd love like a Leeds as well. Because even though oh, like yeah. Leeds and just to get a job over them, because we've never beaten them ever. So that would be, be it. No, walking away from Ellen Road would be unreal. Yeah, with a police escort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one otherwise. Out at least stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or uh, Derby County and have a room. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I don't want to. No, do you know what? I think um, if Stockport played Derby, Stockport would wipe the floor with them. Because this yeah. Derby side is useless. Um, they're yeah. the most useless. They are, they are the most useless Derby side since the one that got 11 points in the Premier League. Um, they have, they've started... They, if Derby are to average what um, what they've currently got, they will end up being, coincidentally, the second worst team in Championship history, the third obviously being us, um, and Rotherham being the worst. I think Rotherham got 23 points, and I think That's they got 20 wow. points. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Um, sp- strictly speaking, the third round, you'd want the worst team in the Championship Um but obviously, we've got to get the first, uh, the third round first. And yeah. yeah, I'd happily just someone that's beatable, someone that we can beat. Yeah. Um, realistically, realistically, we want the lowest ranked team in every single round. You know, so say, say, um, say one of the national league, other national league teams gets to the third round, want them, then the fourth round will take on whoever, whatever team in League Two is remaining. Well, you know, yeah. Get to I the remember. sixth round, we'll be fine. I remember um, Lincoln and Sutton, they came across each other, didn't they, one year? Um, which like automatically meant that one of them was in the yeah. quarterfinals, a non-league side was in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. It was Lincoln, actually. Um, ex-hatter ex- Johnny Margaret played against Arsenal. Um, 
Was it, uh, it was that year that Lincoln got to the quarter final, didn't they? And they beat Burnley on the way, and yeah, yeah they beat, beat Burnley. Everton. I think they did. You know, I, I think Everton. I think Chase. Yeah, maybe that, that, uh, Lincoln versus Everton sticks in the mind. Yeah. I think, I think that was that the Battle Cup as well. Say that one at a time, boys. Ben, say that again. I think that was in the Carabao Cup in with Lincoln and Everton. I don't oh, think. Was it, uh... Ah, yeah. Ah, right. I think, okay. I think they played like Brighton and a couple of other teams at home. They've, they did quite oh, well, didn't they? With Danny um, hmm. Cowell and yeah, yeah, Cowley Cowell Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Cowley Brothers, yeah. 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 But, uh, but gentlemen, I think that's all we've got on the agenda. Um, oh, that right. off. Yeah, that's all I've got on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before, obviously, before we go, because we've kind of stole the name off of them. We need to give yeah. uh, Hatters, Hatters Matters a shout Hatters out. Hatters Matters a shout out. Thanks for reminding me. We it's definitely basically, appreciate it. If you're a Stockport fan, it's a, it's an absolutely incredible website. Like it's got more. It's honestly got more on there about Stockport than I've that. Oh, they yeah. I say they forgot. Obviously, it's a website. They would forget more about Stockport in a day than I've ever known about them. The, yeah. the, but on there is incredible. I don't know how Ooh. how he wants it because it's that must take so long. He or she don't discriminate. He, he or she, yeah. He or she, we don't know. Good point. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, but no, that is that is, um, that's the only ad we'll give in this podcast, uh, unless any breweries want to sponsor us. Yeah, please. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, they're um, at Hatters Matters on um, Twitter and Hatters Matters uk on websites. But, uh, but yeah, I think that concludes our first podcast. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. And Thanks hopefully I'll see you again. Uh, I'm not really in charge. It's our group podcast. So, yeah, yeah I'll I check the host, but I think it's just all of us, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah I, think that, I think that concludes it. Thank you for joining us. Anyone was right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.